most often people have misconceptions about how much intercourse is happening in the work that I do. It is an appropriate part of what I do, but it's only about a third of what I do. A surrogate partner is a coach, a guide, an expert in helping people become more comfortable with who they are sexually, honoring and loving their sexuality, and more confidence so that they can go out into the world and share who they are with another person. Come on in. The therapist will call and say, I have a client, I believe he's appropriate, I've seen him for so many sessions, and then give me sort of an outline of their history. Hi. Hi. Have you a little feeling a little tense about today at all? A little. Yeah. Most of us do not grow up in this country feeling good about our sexuality. Clients come to see me with specific concerns. Not having erections when they want them, losing them right after penetration, ejaculating before they want to or not at all with a partner, very little sexual experience, people who are disabled, either from birth or through an accident. And that's pretty much the population I see. It can lead to being sexual. It doesn't have to, but it can. So to learn that it doesn't have to is real important. Mm -hmm. Two people, if they don't have time to make love, this could be a great beginning, and then say, I'll see you later tonight, you know, and stop. And I'll leave the house with all that wonderful energy. After I see the client, I call the therapist before the client sees the therapist for their next session and fill the therapist in on how everything went during that session. And the therapist and I share the information so that we can help them have the best results possible. How'd you get involved in this business? Well, 18 years ago, I heard that Masters and Johnson were doing their work with people instead of the research that had been done for years with animals, watching them have sex. Mm -hmm. I thought, wow, it's about time. It seemed appropriate. Then I found out that they actually had people working with, with single men, mm -hmm. and they called them sex surrogates. At the same time I found that out, a, bo a friend of mine gave me a book called Surrogate Wife, which I read, and then she, in t a friend of mine also was taking a class. Actually, my husband was taking a class in human sexuality, and there was a sex surrogate in the class. And she and I spoke together, and it just went from there. I met the therapist that she worked with, and they interviewed me and felt that I would be good at the work. In 18 years, you've been doing this steady, no other jobs? This no has other, been it. Well, I raised my children yes. along with that, yeah. Yes, I'd like to know how you deal with the issue of morality. I feel very comfortable with what I do. I don't ever think of it as immoral, amoral. I think it's more than, uh, it's the most moral thing I probably could ever do other than raising my children. We'll start with you, Cheryl. Will you explain what a sexual surrogate is? Well, actually what it is is I have um, provided partners for a client who will come into a therapist. I work only with therapists. And what provided partner means is I'm trained to help that person deal with a sexual concern. I hate the word dysfunction, but that's the commonly used phrase. Someone has a sexual problem, a problem of dealing with the sexual act. They are right. seeing a psychologist, a clinician. That clinician recommends you. Yes. There are many things, though, besides the sexual act that people come in with concerns about, and that's social skills. I work with people who have had little or no sexual experience and are very scared to go out into the world. And I work with disabled people who have never had their sexuality acknowledged. How does what you do help? Most of the people that I work with have such a lack of self-understanding, a lack of education. No, most of us didn't grow up with any kind of sex education. Most of it came from our friends talking, um, from movies, from reading porn. That's very unfortunate. Most men get their uh, sex education, most of the men that I've uh, worked with, either through uh, pornographic literature, from going to movies, so their education is very seriously lacking, and they're reading things like Harold Robbins' novels and thinking that's reality instead of understanding that that's Harold Robbins' fantasy. Um, and porn is basically fantasy. So they come in with a great deal of uh, concern about they're supposed to be in control, they're supposed to orchestrate sex, they're supposed to have erections that last all night, they never should wane in fullness at all, they should get them immediately when the woman undresses, they should never have to have direct stimulation or touching of their genitals. And uh, with that kind of understanding or that misunderstanding, you can understand why so many people need help. Yeah, well, suppose the client end, falls in love with you. Or vice versa. We, that's one of the reasons, that's one of the many reasons for why a therapist is involved. But as the process is going on and it's obvious that a client is starting to feel very affectionate feelings for us, for me, um, 
we're talking about that openly. It's not hidden. And we discuss yeah. it with the therapist. The therapist is always in on that. And it's really appropriate for that person to understand it's okay to love and to let go. Do you get turned on, Cheryl? Very. <laughs> <laughs>